So we've got Trent James with us, who's from New Zealand, our New Zealand entrant from Wanganui. Evening, James, you all right? Yeah, I'm all right. Yourself? I'm very well. I'm very well. Right, so you came over to the UK at the back end of August, but you're not in the UK at the moment. You're somewhere very different. Yeah, we're over in Sweden at the moment. We came over to do a bit of sightseeing and managed to get into the Scania factory over here, check out some trucks and that. So, but so we're were, here. were you invited into the Scania factory or did you just like sneak in through a security door? Like, was it all legit? Yeah, we got all invited to get over here, so pretty cool pretty cool to come over here and see the factory considering we have all our scania trucks back at home uh, so what is your like so what's day job what's what's your family business then if, if it's is it trucking what is what is it yeah so we got a family business back at home started off as a just a trucking company but we've kind of expanded and we got the workshop now and we maintain all of our trucks ourselves so yeah we got well probably Oh, well, yeah, we got we got Mook's side of it as well back in home. So, yeah, we definitely got a few trucks, got our own workshop. And, yeah, I'm in the workshop where I play my part, but yes. big family business. Good. Right. So, like I said, you came to UK back in the box. We'll talk about racing at Bradford in a minute. So what else have you kind of done when you've been over in the UK? What, what have you done with your time? So, yeah, we landed here and then drove straight to bradford done the racing then after that we kind of cruised around the uk went to manchester birmingham um spent some time in london so pretty much we went everywhere done all the sightseeing type of things and yeah ended up jumping on the underwater train or whatever it is and oh. went over to paris done a couple of days in paris then yeah hopped on another plane and came over here that's, it's a very busy b i love it that you call it the underwater train that they should have named it that in the first place i think that's fantastic it's genius it's genius they should have done that um yeah. right <laughs> so let's talk about bradford so first time in a formula one stock car you raced at bradford which is notoriously quite a, a difficult track for people to master and you did really well 11th in the final saturday night eighth in the grand national ninth in the final sunday second in the grand national on sunday and then I, um, I don't know if you've seen this like a, a forum on the internet Stocksnet, and you were like nominated as the driver of the day on the Sunday, where fans kind of go, "This is who I thought drove the best." So clearly, you impressed people on certainly on the Sunday. How did you find Bradford? Yeah, it was good. When I first got there and went down with the girl banks, had a look around the track and all that. We the way that the corners square off to the straights, I was, could already tell that you'd end up being sucked under the fence fairly easy. So, yeah, yeah, just had a bit of a look at it. Then, yeah, first, first night took me a couple of laps to get get myself off the tyres, and I ended up collecting a few of them over the weekend. But he yes. found out you can't ride the fence here like you can back in New Zealand. But well, once you yeah, once I managed to get myself comfortable on it and turn in some good laps, it was actually a really fun track. Yeah, so yeah, really enjoyed it by the end of it. So I, I did notice on Saturday you kind of you check the fence out and you, you check the middle out and you you know what I mean you were you, you were exploring like Bradford, which I thought was good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, just getting a bit of me everywhere. <laughs> so is the racing? You know, we we ask this question a lot from when you guys kind of come over, but I think it's relevant. Is, is the racing much different, or once you kind of in it, it's actually this is this is stock cars and I know what I'm doing. Yeah, um, yeah, it's very, it's more similar than I thought. Um, I was actually a little bit surprised. I don't think you run really hit, hit as much over here, but coming into the corners, everyone was punting each other over here, so th that's always fun. But yeah, yeah, I think I think back at home we have, we obviously all start. We don't have the rolling start with your roof colours. We all just start yeah. together. So I'd yeah. say back home we kind of have more chaos within the first few laps since it's everyone pushing from the back to the front straight away yeah. but yeah it, it isn't too different i didn't think and uh, which one's easier to drive it or, or are they both just like actual animals and neither oh well, well I'd, I'd have to say back home they, they must be easier but once again i've driven quite a few more laps back at home than i have here so. yeah 
Uh, I'd say one if you manage to spend a few meetings on it, the better you'll get, which is the more comfortable you get to the car. Yeah, okay, brilliant. So you raced a car, it was Louis Goodwin's car, wasn't it, that the Gill Banks were looking after for you on the night. So what's the relationship there? Because they came over to New Zealand last year, didn't they, uh, Liam raced? Yeah, he came over for 248 um, yeah. in New Zealand. I think he done a meeting in Auckland as well, but... He sorted all that out through Asheries back at home. Um, he came over here last year. Um, and then with my racing back at home, we're pretty close with the Reezes and Asher. Asher does a hell of a lot for me. So with my connection with Asher, then Asher's connection with Liam, when it all came up about me coming over, Asher kind of took over the role of sussing me out my cars and all that. So he got in contact with the Gilbanks and, pretty much got us together and yeah, got over here. Good. So um, you are only 18 and I think you are the youngest entered entrant, which is brilliant. And in terms of being invited to come over to the UK, you, you guys have to kind of qualify in some, in some of your championships. So what's kind of been your qualification method to get invited to the world final? Um, yeah, my qualification I got was from World 240s in Rotorua last year that, um, the Great Britain guys that you come over and race in as well. So I, I pre-qualified the year before from winning the second tier. So oh, okay. for the first practice meeting, I was actually racing with the um, UK guys. I was doing the hot laps with them. But yeah. yeah, in the finals, I managed to gain second overall. I missed out on winning the World 240s by one point. Okay. Um, but Jamie Hamilton won it, so he got the invitation. And then... Jamie um, turned down the invitation to come over here, so then it moved to me second in line. So, yeah. yeah. And have you been? Have you ever? I guess it's the first time in the UK, isn't it? So it's like first time over here, first time seeing stock cars. Yeah, it's, the, the cars are definitely a yeah. They're, they're a whole lot different to what we have back at home. So that was a bit of a surprise when we first started looking around them. But yeah, I've never been this far around the side of the world, so the whole lot of it are just a cool experience. Yeah. And how many of you have come over, like, in your party? How many have come with you? Yeah, so my team, is seven of us that have come over, so pretty large number, but, yeah, just might as well make the most of the trip. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Right, so let's look at um, Skegness. So it's in a, in a week, uh, week, week today, well, final, as we're talking tonight, a week today, um, on tarmac, which is a very different surface to what you you race on, isn't it? Because no, you only do shell in New Zealand. Yeah, or we do. Yeah, we just do dirt back at home. There's no such thing as stock cars on tarmac. So I've never, yeah, I've never raced anything on tarmac. So it should be interesting. It will be. And what, and what car are you using on Saturday? I'm not, I'm actually not too sure on the actual guy's car. Um, <laughs> But, yeah, once again, the Gilbanks have sorted it out. Um, I know that they've rebuilt it and built a new engine to go in it. Um, Liam sent me photos the other day of that they put the engine in and it's running now. And then, yeah, when I stopped in there last week, it didn't have the engine in it. But, yeah, okay. that's running now. So, yeah, they've sorted all that out for us. So you're just like, yeah, I've definitely got a car. I don't care where it's come from. I don't know who it is. But, yeah, I've got a car to race it. Well, fine, I could eat. Yeah, it, it, everyone's told me that the car's a good car, so, yeah, we just put all my faith into them. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm sure they'll tell you the truth. Um, in terms of practice, then, what's that going to look like prior to Saturday? Are you going to get any practice in? Because obviously we've got Friday, night, Friday practice, haven't we? Is that kind of what you're aiming today? Yeah, we were trying to get me a practice during the week at one stage, I believe. But, um, yeah. yeah, as far as I know now, I'll just be doing the practice on the Friday, so hopefully get to turn as many laps as I can and try come to grips with it. But yeah. yeah, just do the Friday, then try hit the Saturday as good as we can. Oh, I think the time trial is on the Friday as well now. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. Yeah, hopefully I'll be somewhere decent by then. So realistically, you know, it's an alien uh, surface for you. Uh, you know, you could have never done stock cars on tarmac. Um, what, what are you aiming for from the World Final itself? Oh, um, the, the whole goal for me since the start was just to obviously get over here and actually finish the race, hopefully. So, 
Yeah, I, I mean, you did that at Bradford. That's good. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Br- Bradford was just a meeting that didn't mean anything. Like the World Final was a big one, so that was just a bit of fun. And I think everyone was surprised by how, how quick I picked that up. So we're all, uh, well, yeah, we're already over the moon of how well I went over there on shales. So yeah, worst, worst comes to worst, I'll just be able to use that, that and try and push away the poor performance. Yeah, absolutely. I did well when I came to the UK. Look, look I did this. Um, yeah. So when, so you've got a Friday practice and we've got a Saturday, Sunday racing. So you get two kind of good days out of the weekend at Skegness. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, back home, we early, yeah, we just have the two nights for our big championships. So, yeah, yeah it should, should be a cool experience to see how it all works over here. And have you seen the track? Because Skegness is quite small, but it's only by our standards. It's one of the smallest sort of tracks for racing. Have you seen kind of any videos of it? Um, I saw the um, interview, well, world final kind of thing, video that you made there. Um, yeah. I watched that, and I've seen a couple of photos and videos of races on there, but, yeah, I haven't seen it in person or anything. So No. Mm. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. Um, yeah. It will be, absolutely. And in terms of when you when do you go back home then? So sort of the Sunday's the 15th, and then when do you guys kind of fly back to New Zealand? So we actually fly back to New Zealand on the 16th. So yeah. we're racing on the Sunday. Then on the Monday, we drive back to Heathrow and then fly out. And then we'll get back to New Zealand on the 18th. Yeah, it, right, that messes with my mind. When I went to Australia, right, I it, I struggled with the concept of like, how about, I think I gained a day and then I came back and it's like, I am travelling in time. Do you know, genuinely, because it is, it, it messes with your mind. Yeah, the mess of our minds coming over here as well, buddy. We stopped on, so our first flight was New Zealand to Singapore. Then we yes. actually spent the night in Singapore and then changing from New Zealand to Singapore and Singapore to over here just got even more confusing, I believe. Yeah, absolutely. You just don't know where you are. You just don't know where yeah. it is. It's bizarre. It's a bizarre experience. Um, mm. Obviously, you know, you know, like UK stock car racing and you're kind of familiar with some of the big names. Who do you see as sort of the favourite on, on Saturday for the world, for getting the gold roof again? Oh, yeah, I, I don't really know if that many people over here. I pretty much know of the people that come over for teams each year and yeah. Team GB and I oh, I know a couple of other ones over here that you see around but buddy the, the, the way Facebook and everything's been leading on you've been seeing I, I, I believe Tom will probably be the man to beat again yeah absolutely but don't believe everything you read on the internet Trent do you know what I mean that's it's a lesson in life isn't it don't believe everything you see on the internet who knows who knows yeah. At end of the day, it's stock car racing, so it, it could be anyone off that grid to win it. But yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, whoever whoever you... wins it will deserve it. Yeah, uh, they, they absolutely will. They absolutely will. You mentioned teams. Like, uh, you, have you done? So you do teams as well? Have you done teams? Um, I didn't do Palmy teams last year since. Yeah, I'm still fairly young, so we've been kind of trying to breathe myself into it. So. When I get into it, I'm at the right stage. But I done Auckland teams this year for um, yeah teams Nats in Auckland. I raced for the Manawatu Mustangs since the yeah. Warriors Wanganui's team had a full squad. So I jumped over to Palmy for the teams and got a bit of a taste of it. So I'd say next year there should be hopefully be able to try and make Palmy. So the so the Palmerston one then is that like next level like this is as good as it gets from teams perspective but as a New Zealand driver that's kind of what you aspire to do when you're doing teams racing. Yeah, Palmy teams is the major teams meeting of the season for Super Socks and everything. That that meeting probably gets the biggest hype out of everything. Um, yeah, yeah, you go there every year and the stands are full no matter what and. Yeah, everyone loves it. See, I've, I've seen videos and I've seen, like, the, the crowd. And it's like, it seems like well, it's just huge. It's a monstrous crowd and, and the town's, like, all geared up for it. It just seems like this massive event. Yeah, it's, it's just an amazing weekend and everything to even just go be a spectator. Because, yeah, town's full on the Friday or Saturday night, the first night. There's always cars all through the um, town and all that parked up. They can go check out, and they all go to the square in the middle of the town, go to scrutineering, and then, yeah, head off to the track. So, yeah, it's just such a big build-up, and everyone gets into it, bloody. 
every time someone does a big hit or whatever, everyone's buddy all about it. So yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Cool. So we make a big deal of, of Team GB kind of coming over to Race New Zealand and saying that how difficult it is because it's very. It's, it's completely different to what we do in, in our racing. You know, we race for ourselves, don't we, on track, and then you go to teams and you've got to race as a team, and then um, in New Zealand as well. So from your perspective, do you think they do well to kind of – because they do, do – you know, most years they're kind of up there, aren't they? Fourth, third, seconds? Yeah, I, I reckon it's actually a little bit bad, bloody. Team GB come over and kind of show us up a little bit, bloody. <laughs> Yeah, they, yeah, they they definitely come over, and I think they surprise a few people by how far along they get. Like, yeah, but if fourth the uh, first year they came back, then third again this year. But yeah, he, well, it looks good for them. It does, and you know, like obviously you've got. I understand that different. You've got different teams, and you've got fans of each team. But as in many New Zealand people that su- almost support Team GB, kind of recognising the effort that they've put in and, and want them to do well. Yeah, I know that when they came back, um, there were a few people that were all excited about it. But yeah, just buddy, yeah, everyone kind of gets behind what whatever teams kind of well, doing good, I suppose. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you this evening. Um, before we go, clearly coming over to the UK, racing in the world final, you you don't do that on your own. You must have a bit of support behind you to get you halfway across the world. Yeah, exactly. The support that has been shown towards me has been unreal. Um, we had a auction fundraiser night back home before, or the weekend before I left and managed to raise a fair bit of funds to get me over here. So, yeah, yeah been, been awesome, the support that we've gotten from everyone. And any sponsors as well? Oh, yeah. Um, my sponsors, Sharp as Lionhall, um, Supercar Lunch Drives, uh, Speedway Garage, Wanganui, um, Advanced Panel and Paint Pumps North, Critty Flex, Mac Tech Services, Display Associates, Wanganui, Midtown Motors, Wanganui, Breeze Race Cars, Hullenback Haulage, B&T, Wholesale Tires, DC Services, New Image Here, Freightliner Hardcore, Still Shop, Wanganui, and Taupo Diesel Solutions. You've got some good sponsors. And I, I think Wanganui sounds like an amazing place to be. I just love the name. It's brilliant. It's a great name. Great name for a place to live. Yeah, great little town and great little club that we have in Wanganui. Everyone sports everyone. So Yeah. Yeah. Listen, you get back to Sweden. Where are you doing in Sweden? Massages or saunas, steam rooms? Um, and then get yourself mentally prepared uh, for the world final at Skegness. And I'll see you there in a week's time. Thanks so much for your time, Trent. Yeah, sweet. Thank you.